to my channel. My name is Johanna, and for those of you who are new here, welcome. And for those of you who are returning, welcome back. Here on my channel, I do planner and planner-related videos, DIY tutorials, budget videos, and the occasional new release video of items that I've listed to my Etsy shop. And if that is of interest to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you hit that little notification bell, you'll always be notified of when I do load a new video. Also, if you could comment, like, and share, that does help my channel grow and would be truly appreciated. So this is the craft that we are making today. This is number six in my craft series 2019. And so what we're going to be doing today is this cute little um, craft right here. And what it is, it does have a hidden pocket to hold this cute little notebook and it's very simple to put together and then also it does have this extra pouch uh, to hold your crayons or your color pencils and it couldn't be easier to put together so stay tuned and we will get started now the basis for that pocket is actually an envelope and I picked this from the post office when I was there the other day picking up stamps and these are the number 10 size which is four and a quarter by nine and a half and you're only going to need one. Now this idea was inspired by someone here on YouTube. Her name is I think it's Shabby Dabba Duda. <laughs> it's a really cool name. She does junk journals and she used this as an embellishment for her junk journal. But I thought this could be a cute standalone craft that you could either make uh, for your younger guests or just your guests in general for upcoming holiday things. I think it'd be a very cute craft you could sell at a craft fair. It also is easy enough to put together with readily accessible supplies that you could do this as a group activity at church, at school, at work, or whatnot. I am going to be using a... Uh, 12 by 12 piece of paper. Uh, we're going to do a Christmas style for this one just because I wanted to play with this paper pad. I did pick up this and the matching 6 by 6 for some projects I'm going to be putting in my Etsy shop hopefully soon. <laughs> But um, I wanted to play with these because I haven't actually um, used them yet. So we are going to need some kind of decorative paper. You will need an envelope and glue. Having some coordinating washi it will not be a bad idea. And I'm going to be using my cutting board, but you know, a scissors and a ruler works fine. And then I have some just regular copy paper. So let's get started. I think what I'll do first uh, so I can put this away is we'll just pick our paper and see, haven't used it, it's not even opened. And if you're wondering, uh, yes, it is after work and yes, I'm crafting when I should be sleeping. So this is the paper pad. It's, it's actually really cute. I'm looking forward to doing some things for my shop in this but I want you guys just to see it. And if it's still available on Amazon where I picked it up, then I will definitely link it below. And that's really cute as well. All right, I, I really like that one, but I think I'm leaning towards this. So this is the paper we're gonna use. It is only single-sided, but that's okay for this project. Now this measures, like I mentioned, four and an eighth by nine and a half. Now in order to get our pocket, um, what we need to do first is actually glue this flap down. Now when you're gluing this down, um, I definitely recommend that you do not go into this part because we do want this to be a functional pocket. Hopefully you can see. So I'm gonna run some glue here. And then up along the sides, but I'm going to just skip all together that blue section, because again, I do want to slide my paper in and make this a functional pocket. 
And then I'll close that up. Now you could lick it. I actually am particular to licking envelopes, but one, I didn't want to do that on camera. And if you are assembly lining doing this, um, that could be a lot of spit. <laughs> so I think this works just as well. So I'll let that dry for just a little bit and we'll cut down some of our paper. Now I will have um, all of the measurements in my accompanying blog post and just like I have. Now, this could be problematic because it is a directional paper, so I will definitely need to keep that in mind. And so I will cut some pieces and I'll explain why I'm doing it as I'm going. You know, when I do things, it's, it's hard to do things and talk at the same time, but I will try my best. And what I'll do is I will cut, when I ripped it out, I kind of crinkled it, but it's okay. And because I know the bottom is a straight edge, I'm actually going to do it this way. And so I'm going to measure a long piece because, yeah, I want the width to be four inches. Because again, uh, when I did that other one that I showed you in the beginning, it wasn't directional, so it didn't matter. So I'll cut at four. And then this first piece I want to be three inches and because I can see the pattern I'm actually going to cut a little bit off more to center the pattern because the piece that we're cutting is this piece here so it will have um, the most focus on the pocket so I'll cut an inch off the bottom and we'll, we'll save that, we might be able to use it. And now I'll measure to three inches. Although that does decapitate the deer. Oh no. Oh no. I don't want decapitated deer. This is Christmas paper. All right, I think we can, yeah. Maybe one of those other patterns might have been a better idea. <laughs> All right, yes, the deer, the deer are safe. You don't have to call PETA. So this is a three by, so three by four inch piece of paper and that will cover our pocket. And then let's see how tall this one is. And this one actually is perfect because what we want is four by seven. So yay, happy accident. And then for this piece of paper, I didn't actually measure it because it's an off cut, but we're gonna cut another piece of this and we'll see how it works. Now this one, I actually want to cut thinner than the four inches and so we'll do three and a half and once I put it together you'll see why and then also it can be shorter than the seven inches so we'll do five again for this one I didn't measure it um, but I think we're gonna be okay so we've got five by what did I say, three and a half? We'll leave our off cuts here for now. We'll get some semblance of order and then we will make our pocket. So it's this piece, this piece, and this piece. Now you could um, cut multiple of your paper and then use different patterns on here, but I'm just gonna use the same one just for demonstration purposes. Now the next step we're gonna be doing is making the pocket. Now in her video, and again, I will link her channel below, you would assume that you would fold up like this, but she actually suggests to fold up like this because if for any reason your glue does not get a really good hold there, if that flap is on the inside, it will always catch. But if it's on the outside and we're gonna be covering it anyway, then you are good to go. 
Now you do have to measure this and uh, you need to measure the pocket so that it is three and an eighth. I'll just grab whatever's pen is handy. So I'll make some dots. If you have a scoring tool, then you can just score this at three and an eighth, but there is actually no need for it because I didn't use it in that one I showed you in the beginning. And draw your line, and because, whew, thought we made a mistake. <laughs> because this is gonna be the inside, no one's gonna see this, so it's fine. And the reason why you're gonna do that is because if you're not using a scoring tool, what you can do is butt this up, your ruler, against your line, and then just kind of make the score yourself. And that just makes the fold uh, that much easier to do. Okay. And then if you have a bone folder, is that what it is? A bone folder? It sounds weird. You're not folding bones. Nine o'clock at night is not the time to craft, guys. Take it from Auntie Jo. Anyway, if you just have something to really buff that crease in, then I would definitely recommend that, but your pen works just as well. Now, because I need the glue to set on this, we're gonna do this and then work on another phase of our project. And so you want to get as thin of a bead as you can, because the thicker this is, the smaller your pocket is. And so we'll just do that on both sides. And then bring that up. And that does give us our inside pocket. And this um, Elmer's Craft Bond dries relatively quickly, so we'll be able to come back to this in just a little bit. But while we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to use our six by six pad and make that cute little uh, notebook. Oh, it's up already. So let's pick something coordinating, kind of like that one. Oh, the green's nice too. No, I think we're gonna do this one. I'm gonna cut this out. And then we'll, I'll cut off that so this is a true six by six. And it does, I find, help to measure and cut versus just cutting off at the little perforated because if I were to take the perforated as a guide, it actually is slightly shorter than six inches. Um, but if I actually measure to six inches, you'll see the perforation remaining. And that's okay. I mean, it's, it's perfectly okay because it does just miss the circle. But I just want to make sure I have a six by six piece of paper because my inserts are measured off of that. And then for your paper, now I don't know why I folded it, but I did, so I'm gonna have a weird crease. But I have four sheets of paper here. And you can do as little or as many as you want, and depending on the thickness of your paper, uh, that also will uh, change up what your um, thickness of your notebook will be. But I'm just gonna take these and cut it the long way right in half. So I have two sheets that are uh, five and a half inches long because it's 11 by eight and a half. And then I'm going to cut this by two and a half inches. And with that, I should be able to get three cuts per half or six pieces for my notebook per page. So I think it, it really um, makes your paper stretch a little bit farther, especially if you are mass producing these. 
Now, as I've mentioned in this series, if you are doing uh, some of this for craft fairs, uh, this is something that you could actually do more heavily with holiday themed, because uh, I think it would make great stocking stuffers or little activities that um, your guests or children can do while they're waiting for dinner or watching football or whatever it is you do during the holidays, because this is something that can be consumed, as it were, the day of Christmas or leading up to Christmas. Although I think it would make fun activity packs for a New Year's Eve, whatever you're celebrating, uh, so you would just want to plan accordingly. Now, we may have cut too many for the actual little notebook, but I can make more of these, so it doesn't really matter. So we've got our stack there. And then the notebook is really simple. We're just, it's not directional. So we're gonna just fold this in half like those other notebooks that we made in our last series. Again, you wanna buff that in. And then we're just going to staple this in. I think that might be too much, so I'm just gonna take half. In the one that I showed you earlier, I think I literally had six pieces of paper. So again, it doesn't really matter. You just wanna have a handy little notebook. Actually, we'll put the, that, I don't know if you can see, but that's the perforated edge. We will put that up to the top. Now in a series or in a video that I plan to do later on in this series, I'll show you how you can make a little notepad that doesn't use staples, um, but again, that's gonna be further down the line. And then I was thinking maybe we can use that little off cut to kind of hide the staple. And so let's just do some cutting. And I just want it to be a little bit shorter than the actual notebook because I don't want you to see it when you open the notebook. And so this is two, one, two, three, four, five, six, two and seven eighths by one and a quarter. One eight, two eighths. is one fourth. Yeah, one and a quarter. <laughs> Math. <laughs> so I'm just going to fold this in half and we're going to slide that right on top. See how it looks. Close this up. And yeah, that looks fun. So we're going to glue the back piece on. And I'm gonna glue just a little bit in the fold, but I'm gonna leave the front open for now, um, just because I think that would interfere with ripping out the paper once you're done. But I do wanna make sure that it does not go over the edge of the paper there. Now you can see that at the back, that does not bother me. And again, we're gonna let that dry. Now you could judge this up even more by putting an embellishment or a sticker because it does slide in that pocket. I wouldn't put anything dimensional because it will get caught. But I mean, again, you can make this as fancy um, as you'd like. So we will put that to the side for now and we will come back to our pocket. And I would just work it a little just because this will be stuffed. Now in this one, I cut this pocket open because uh, I thought maybe you could stick a tag or something in there. If you're using this for junk journaling and whatever's in this pocket isn't that thick, then I would definitely recommend that. But if you are putting something like this where the contents are thick, um, I think that is just, it's, it's too thin. So for this one, we're just going to leave it intact. But this top part up here, we are going to cut that. Now you can use your paper cutter, but I find it's just as easy to cut just a thin sliver and then you've got your pocket. And so what we're gonna be doing is 
that is our front piece and the dimensions um, actually are perfect so that there is a little bit of a mat. Now if you can find these envelopes and colors um, then you're definitely going to want to coordinate that with whatever paper pad or scrapbooking paper that you're using. Uh, this was just in the post office and I was there so I thought I'd, I'd pick it up. So I will put this one down and because this is such a decorative piece I don't think I even need to put any other elements on there because I think that shows just a lot of decoration as is but if yours is like this where the background is colorful but rather plain then you can put die cuts or stickers or whatnot again if you are making this as a favor or you know a stocking stuffer then yeah you can go to town if you're making this as something for a craft fair then just be aware of your costs <clears throat> now this back piece um, is much longer than what we need but the reason for that is we are going to fold it and it doesn't need to be perfect so you don't need a scoring tool again. We're trying to make this a simple craft that you can do as a group or with children. And the reason for that is we're actually going to hook it in here so that it gives it not only a finished edge, but also a more secure one. Because if you are gonna be sliding in it, things in and out of here, this could get some wear and tear, okay? So this one, what we'll actually do is glue the flap first. And then we'll slide it in. You want to get it as centered as you can and then fold it over and then just kind of press it down to make it as flush as you can with the top of the envelope. And again, it doesn't matter if the, it isn't perfectly centered, honestly. <laughs> no one's gonna be looking at your matting skills. They're just gonna be looking at, wow, that's really pretty. So yeah, take your time, you know, don't, do it on, or if you do it on film, do it during the day when you're having just worked an eight hour day and sat in traffic all morning, but you know, whatever. <laughs> and then we're gonna glue this piece down. You could use score tape from a cost perspective though. Wet glue works just as well and it does give you a little bit of wiggle room. Again, that will dry relatively quickly, but we just wanna buff it in just a little and that's looking really cute as is now you could leave it I mean it is a bit much but what we're going to be doing is the exact same thing where we're going to be folding over a little bit at the top this one it doesn't really matter so long as you have a little bit that can tuck into that pocket. And that would go there. And for this part, you actually have one of two options. Now this one I deliberately cut short, so you will see it. But because we did glue the pocket, um, it may or may not go all the way in, so I thought it'd just be easier to cut it short. But what I was saying with your two choices is, well, you know what, let's just glue it in and I can show you better. So, glue this in. Now for this one, you want to get, you don't, you don't want to get the side that covers. And I'll tell you why in a minute. So we're gonna slide this in, trying to center it as best as we can. And then we're gonna just kind of buff that in. And while, while we're waiting for that for dry, we'll talk about this one. So you have the two options like I mentioned. You can either glue it 
fully down and then it's just a proper mat or you could leave it like this and then you know if you are giving this as a gift it does give you a place to write a cute little sentiment uh, if you're using this for a junk journal that also gives you another journaling spot both there and there again that's your design choice but I did wanted to uh, show you that you did have the option that's why we wanted to design it just a little bit longer than the actual pocket okay so for this one we're just going to tuck in just because it's just the easiest and that essentially is our pocket and then for this one yeah i think that actually looks quite nice And even though you'll see the staple on the back, I think I want to staple this again. When you're doing this, you may want to do multiple at the top just so that it doesn't go crooked. And because we have it somewhat hidden, then that's okay because when they're done with this sheet and you could do it a little play tic-tac-toe or, or whatever, then you can just rip it off and you'd still be used you'd still be able to use this as just like a little decorative flap. And so this can go in here. Now, of course, if you look at it, you can still see the inside of the envelope. And if you wanted to, you could stick more paper in there and glue it down if that really bothered you. It doesn't bother me. So that goes in like that. And then I showed you this in the other activity pack. I had picked this up and I would just pick five or three, three would work as well, random crayons. I think this is the most economical. Oh, you know what? Actually, no. There's a reason why I have the washi. When I was doing this one, when I stuffed it, I noticed the paper in the back was starting to lift because I didn't glue the edges really well. So you can use some coordinating washi. And I'm actually gonna go for this one. Hopefully it'll let the paper speak. And you would just border the front. And if you've glued this down, then you can go over that. If you have not, then I would leave it because then you won't be able to open up your little journaling spot. And then just fold it to the back. As I mentioned in that video, you do want it to look nice, but this is not an heirloom, so. It's not something that has to stand at the test of time. And I think that is just a really nice edge. And that also means that little white piece right there is not a big deal. And cut that right there. Fold to the back. That way it gives our edges a little bit more security. It also keeps our sides of our paper down. And then we don't have to worry about overstuffing the pocket. And then just for good measure, we'll do the bottom as well. And this is more to, to make it look finished than it is to protect the bottom. This washi is actually really cute generally don't use washi except for crafting because I'm so bad at it. I think that looks really sweet. And so you would put your crayons in here or your colored pencils or your pen, you know, again, whatever it is that you're putting in here. I think a uh, Paper Mate Flare pen, because uh, they do sell them, or I think it's actually the Ink Joy, but they do sell them in minis, would look really cute in here. Just cutting the edge so that it opens up a little nicer. And then we would put our little notebook in here and it slides right in and just it's a little surprise. And then if you wanted to, if you had little sticker sets, you could actually put little stickers in here. This is one that I had bought 
several months ago from the Modest Cat from her Etsy shop. And this is their winter floral. Um, you could stick some tags in there. I mean, you could really just stick whatever you'd like in here. But I think this makes a cute little fun activity pack. I think this would be great for your next get together or your craft fair. And depending on the paper and washi that you use, you can make this for all seasons. All right, guys, that's my little activity pack number two. Um, the whole playlist for this craft series will be in the description box below. Uh, any of the products I used will be in the description box and the measurements and whatnot will be on my blog and you can find that, guess, yep, in the description box. All right, guys, that's it for me for now. And as always, aloha.